Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. Thank you all so much for an amazing 2022 year full of Yu-Gi-Oh! ups and downs and just everything in between. I'm so appreciative for each and every single one of you this year, and I hope that you have a nice, relaxing New Year's Eve, and I hope that you're excited for the brand new year. It's going to be a great one, and if you don't think it will be, maybe subscribe to the channel and hit that bell. I think it'll make you feel a lot better, but all jokes aside, thank you so much for all the support. It really does mean a lot to me. We are full steam ahead. So let's talk about a deck profile to celebrate the end of the year. One of my more favorite decks that I've enjoyed running throughout the years, and that is ha -ha, Malefics. Now, is this deck good at like a highly competitive level? No, it needs a lot of support, unfortunately. I feel like Dual Tower was a very interesting indirect piece of support for the deck, and we will be talking about that later on in the video. But I saw that uh, TCG Player Writer uh, had posted an article talking about Malefics and had put out a build that was, it was a character deck profile, like based on the Paradox character from the movie. And some of the card choices in there weren't very good. Like he was playing three Malefic Tune with three Claw Stream. Claw Stream is really ass. It only pops one monster on the field and you got to control Malefic Monster. That's just not very good. Um, he was playing more of a package with like Red Eyes and Rainbow Dragon with the Malefic Monsters. That doesn't seem very good. Um, so I just decided to throw in one Blue Eyes and one Malefic Blue Eyes because it is a level 8 that you can Synchro off with the Parallel Gear. Uh, Parallel Gear being a very interesting tuner monster because it says when using this card as a Synchro Material, the other Synchro Material must be one Malefic Monster in your hand. So if you have Malefic Blue Eyes in your hand and maybe your Blue Eyes got milled from an Ishizu card, then you use the Parallel Gear to Synchro with the dead Malefic Blue Eyes in your hand to make a level 10 Paradox Dragon or any level 10 synchro if you want like this second gustav max could be a different level 10 synchro so let's just go ahead and dive on into this deck profile so we're playing one blue eyes and one malefic blue eyes um these monsters aren't very good because you have to banish the uh counterpart monster from your hand or deck uh and all the malefic monsters share an effect that there can only be one malefic monster on the field at a time and other monsters you control cannot declare an attack and if there's no face up field spell on the field destroy this card you can play around that with things like Skill Drain. Fun fact, <clears throat> if I could speak today, uh, if Skill Drain is face up on the field uh, and you have, like, let's say a Malefic Monster on the field, well, that Malefic Monster's effect is negated to where there can only be one Malefic on the field at a time. So as long as the Skill Drain's face up, you can summon out multiple Malefic Monsters. And Skill Drain also acts as a field spell. If Skill Drain's face up on the field and you don't have any Malefics on the field, well, Skill Drain will negate their effects as soon as they come to the field. So you can summon out a monster, its effects are instantly negated by Skill Drain, and it stays on the field. When Malefics used to be a good rogue deck back in the day, that was something that a lot of people did. Uh, now that it's back at three, it just becomes more consistent. You're essentially now playing nine field spells between Mound, Malefic World, and Skill Drain. We're playing one Malefic Truth Dragon. It's a 5,000, 5,000 attack and defense beat stick of a monster so it says it can't be normal summoner set it can only be stressed on by its own effect and cannot be stressed on by the ways if a malefic monster you control except truth dragon is destroyed by battle by card effect you can pay half your life points especially on this card from your hand or grave there can only be one malefic monster on the field at a time no field spell destroy this card uh if this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle destroy all face up monsters your opponent controls so it just instantly pops all monsters on the field then a newer piece of support that they got recently was Paradigm Dragon with 4,000 attack and defense. Can be special summoned by banishing any Malefic monster from your extra deck while Paradigm is not already on the field. But if you have Skill Drain up, then that's obviously negated. And then if Malefic World specifically is not on the field, then it's destroyed. Again, Skill Drain works around that. Once returned, you can send one Malefic card from your deck to the grave. Return one of your banished level 8 Synchro monsters to the extra deck. Then special summon that monster from the extra deck. Also, you can only attack with Malefic monsters for the rest of the turn. So if you banish Stardust to summon the Malefic version, then the Stardust gets put back and you can bring it out stardust dragon itself isn't that good of a card anymore but still the fact that you get a free special of a synchro monster like that is bananas malefic cyber is just a good beat stick uh we already talked about blue eyes stardust is really cool um it, it uh let me see here face up field spells can't be destroyed by card effects so it gives you field spell protection if skill drain is not on the board which is cool uh and then of course other monsters you control can't attack but that doesn't really matter um, and then you got the parallel gear and then paradox gear. So if a face up field spells on the field, you contribute this card to special summon a parallel gear from your deck, then add a malefic monster from your deck to your hand, except the paradox gear. If a malefic monster you control, or excuse me, if a malefic monster would banish a monster, the special summon itself by its own way, you can banish this card you control or in your grave instead. And you can only use each effect once per turn. This deck needs more cards like Paradox Gear that just cover so much ground and do so much. This thing is a lone fire, and it's also a banished substitute for 
any of your malefics, which is just insane. So if you wanted to play more of these monsters where you have to banish their specific counterpart, then Paradox Gear takes that slot as well. And like I said, the TCG Player article writer did include these originally with three Claw Stream and three Tuning, but then the, or excuse me, Malefic Tune, uh, but then the deck was 45 cards, and I don't feel that that's very good. Um, so just keep that in mind as we go along. This is the guts of that, but with a little bit more spice. Uh, we're playing three Selector. So you banish two Malefic cards from your grave to add two from your deck to your hand, except Selector, with different names from each other and from the banished cards. And then you can only activate one per turn. So you can banish two to add two others from deck to hand. And then, of course, you got the Terraforming because you got plenty of targets. Uh, one Divide. So it's a quick play spell. You target a Malefic Monster in your grave. Special Summon ignoring summoning conditions, but it's effects and get it. Also banish it during the end phase. That seems really good, honestly. Then we're playing uh, three Territory. So when it's activated, you can instantly activate a Malefic World from your deck. And then while that card's in the field zone, neither player can target a card or cards in the field zone with card effects. Uh, the Malefic Monster effect, there can only be one face-up Malefic Monster on the field because there can only be one face-up Malefic Monster on the field with the same name. And then during the battle phase, negate the effects of face-up Malefic Monsters on the field. This helps fix Malefic so much because it instantly allows you to have multiple on the board and change their effect. It, it's such a big help to the deck, but the problem that the deck faces right now is obviously it's field spell dependent, but also just because it needs some consistency and some turbo. It needs to be faster. Then we're playing three mound for the protection, uh, three malefic world itself. So it's interesting. So during your draw phase, instead of conducting your normal draw, you can reveal three malefic cards from your deck. Then your opponent randomly adds one of them to your hand and you shuffle the rest back. So you're guaranteed a malefic monster that you can summon every turn. Uh, and then two malefic tunes. So if a face up malefic monster monsters you control is destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect, you can draw two. And then if a face up malefic monster monsters you control is destroyed while this card's in your grave, except during the damage step, banish this card from your grave to add a malefic monster from deck to hand, and you can only use each effect once per turn. It's not bad, but it's also not very good either. I don't know why you would want to play three. I feel like two is the best way to go. Three metaverse, because now it's at three, so like why not? And then three skill drink, because it's good. Uh, three cyber N, obvious. Uh, one final sigma, three paradox. One of the, God, how do you even pronounce this? Dragocytos Corrupted Nether Soul Dragon. It's the Draco Necro Fusion, but the Synchro version. Some of these cards in the extra deck were taken from another build I had seen a while back, so adjust it accordingly. Uh, we got one Baron, because that's good. Three Stardust, because you need it. And then one Juggernaut Lead with the two Gustav Max. Again, like I said, this one Gustav Max could be something else. I just threw it in as filler. Outside of that, the only other card I really want to discuss here on the side, um, other than these Malefic Monsters that you could play if you want to, um, or like the claw stream and stuff like that that you could play if you want to try it out. And that's Dual Tower. So Dual Tower, when I initially saw this card, I was like, yo, this card actually seems pretty good. It's got a very interesting application as a field spell. So at the start of each battle phase, each player can reveal one monster from their deck that does not have question mark attack. You banish them face down. Then the player who revealed the monster with the highest attack, each player if tied, can special summon one monster from their hand and they can attack directly while on the field. Once per turn during the end phase, you can, you can activate this effect if you control this card during the end phase of your next turn, destroy all cards on the field. That seems really interesting, especially if you feel like your opponent's going to be able to try and mount a comeback against you. Then Dual Tower just blows everything away, and then you just bring out another Malefic Monster and attack directly. This has some very interesting application because you're obviously going to have the monster with the highest attack on the uh, in your hand because like you've got a 5,000, a 4,000, 4,000, 3,000, 25. Like, you have one, two, three, four cards that you can reveal. Uh, not counting the Truth Dragon, since it can only be stressed on by its own effect or even Blue Eyes itself, that you can potentially summon. And that, to me, just seems so insane. I don't know if you should take out Mound of the Bound for it, but the fact that we have access to a card like this in Malefics just seems so damn good. And I'm very interested to see if anybody else testing this deck is going to try Dual Tower. Because I feel like in any deck, it's best in Malefics. You would just maybe have to expand your monster count a little bit. Uh, you know, obviously they have to be special summoned by their effect. But if you could fit in, you know, some cards that could just be summoned on their own. Or even just, I don't know, like a danger package to be able to reveal that. So I don't know, maybe, maybe dual tower. Now that I'm thinking about it, it maybe it isn't the best way. Cause they have to be special summoned by their effect, but it just seems like that there's a way to break dual tower in this deck. And maybe I'm just not seeing it. Or alternatively, we just need more malefic monsters that are high attacks like cyber in that can be special summoned generically by like, you know, monster reborn or malefic divide, you know, since it ignores the summoning condition, 
Um, but I just, I love Malefics. I love it as a concept. I remember back in the day when it first came out, you know, Conrad Selig, who is uh, one of M. Cole 40s close friends. I remember he topped a YCS playing Big Bang Shot, an old ass equip spell that does piercing. And he would just summon out like a Malefic Cyber and give it 400 attack off the Big Bang Shot and let it do piercing. Such an interesting concept, such a cool deck. And it's it's one of my favorites. I absolutely love this deck. You could also too play something like Seal of Ori Calcos because once a turn, if the seal would be destroyed by a card effect, then it's not destroyed uh so it's got that self built-in protection uh so you wouldn't have to play something like field barrier to protect it or something it's just ori calcus can only be activated once per duel so that is something to keep in mind as well so guys let me know what you think about this deck profile down in the comments uh it's one of my more favorite decks it is very casual maybe on a local level it could do something but let me know what you guys think down in the comments below thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video